Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. This is the Into the Weekend with Bet DSI show for uh, college football week five. We're going to talk, as always, to Brent, the headlines manager from DSI Sportsbook, and he's going to give us uh, a little rundown of the uh, notable action that he's taken so far. Today is uh, Thursday before uh, college football week five. Brent, thanks for being back with us. Glad to be with you, Peter. All right, let's get right into it. Uh, first, let's touch on three games that I want to ask you about. The first one, you know, Florida State, not, not the standard, uh, you know, number one team in the country that you have every year right I mean usually it's a team that's you know the, the public is pounding they're either repeatedly covering repeatedly not covering but it's kind of a quirky year for Florida State this line uh, against NC State it's down a lot from 18 and a, it's it's it opened at like 23 now I'm seeing 18 and a half is the public pounding Florida State here I'm not sure I would actually bet that uh, I would guess that the public is kind of like a, a little bit gun shy about Florida State games and that maybe the volume is a little bit lower than than you might normally expect yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost like we rehearsed this one, Peter. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're you're bang on with that there. I mean, the, the my money is, is is basically dead even here. Um, if anything, it slightly favors NC State. I've got public money on both sides. I've got sharp money on both sides. So this is one where I mean, the the, the line's been driven down just by I guess you want to call the the sharper money on mm -hmm. on uh, on the dog there on NC State. I had them starting off taking plus 23, but I have got sharp money back the other way on on Florida State. So it's interesting in in, in that you know I got sharp money on both sides I got public money on both sides and it's probably you know you're, you're bang on in terms of people still trying to figure out Florida State and how good they are or, or, or aren't all right and then uh, the next thing I want to ask you about another interesting one Notre Dame Syracuse this is another one that took a, a huge move in the opposite direction against a, a you know a team that you'd normally assume would be a big public backed favorite uh, it's now nine and a half Syracuse plus nine and a half that's down from the opener of 14 now I haven't uh, I haven't researched this game to see if there's any injury that caused that line movement but uh, unless there's an injury that caused that line movement that must have been uh, caused by overwhelming at least sharp action on Syracuse right yeah I've had some some big money on Syracuse I mean I mean the line opened like around 14 and stuff like that and I mean I didn't open up that high we didn't open that early mm -hmm. um, the line's down to nine and a half right now in the 51 now we've got a little bit of sharp money on Notre Dame but I'm talking like plus 14 was on Syracuse I have plus 11 on Syracuse plus 10 on Syracuse we got a little bit back on Notre Dame uh, when it was uh, minus 10 but we're down to nine and a half just because the money is still overwhelmingly on on Syracuse and right now we do need Notre Dame I, I did get sharp money on this game and it was actually on the total we mm -hmm. got sharp money over 49 uh, totals at 51 right now so that's something to know. so you're telling me the public hasn't come in on, on, on Notre Dame big time here because look Notre Dame is good this year Syracuse has looked bad uh, Notre Dame is coming off a bye I would assume this would be a classic situation where the public would would be loving to bet Notre Dame yeah, it, well, I mean, maybe just the number, them being on the road. Uh, the, like I said, the, my, my count here is pretty much close. My my money slightly favors Syracuse, you know, from 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 the sharper money that I that we took earlier. Mm -hmm. I could see this line maybe going back to ten, just because you know it's moved so much. But uh, I mean, right now, like I said, my my count's dead even, so it's not really overwhelmingly either way in terms of the public going one way or another. Oregon State and uh, and USC right now, USC is is a nine point favorite. They're also off of a buy, and uh, this is also kind of interesting line movement that that also. Went Went down. It was like 10 and a half, and that's a pretty significant movement to cross over 10 for a team like USC that's had an explosive offense uh, coming off of a bye. Uh, I would think that the public would again be attracted to USC here, and so if the line went down, I'm assuming that had to have been sharp action in Oregon State. Yeah, it was sharp money on Oregon State. Right now we have USC minus 9 and a half. I got sharp money on Oregon State when it's plus 11. My money favors Oregon State right now about 2 to 1. And my count is pretty much close. I'm definitely getting more public money on USC, sharp money on Oregon State. Again, it was when it was plus 11, the Sharps came in on Oregon State. And again, just, just public money coming on UC, uh, USC at this point, nothing sharp at all. I guess that's uh, that's about it for the games. I want to make sure that uh, we got to uh, a lot of uh, other matchups that we could have addressed. Let's see if any of them uh, come up in the uh, notable sharp and or public action that you want to tell us about from the rest of the card college football week five. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've got a bunch of them to throw at you guys here, starting with the Friday night game. Um, Fresno State is at New Mexico. we got Fresno State minus five right now. I had a couple of sharps, different groups coming in on New Mexico, plus six and a half mm. and plus six. So they're pretty much one side of there taking New Mexico, plus six and plus six and a half. Line is five right now. I'm starting to get a little bit of money back on Fresno State, but nothing overwhelming. So for those of you who get in on the Friday night game, I mean, sidewise, I, I would say that New Mexico is definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. um, just interesting action on this uh, Wyoming. 
Wyoming Michigan State game starting things off for Saturday. I got sharp money both on Michigan State when it was like minus. We're down at uh, 27 and a half right now, but even like minus 28, 28 and a half, I had sharp money. But some real big betters have been taking uh, Wyoming plus the 30 and a half and plus 29 and a half. That's why we're sitting where we are right now. My count's dead even on this game, and the money's slightly favoring a Wyoming. Maybe uh, maybe more than slightly, we'll say like one and a half times in terms of the dollar uh, dollar amount. But it's really big action on this game. And with a line like 27 and a half, it's not something you usually expect to see a whole lot of uh, a volume on. But the Sharps are, are are hammering this game a lot. Of, you know, if I had to lean one way, it would definitely be Wyoming. But I just wanted to mention that just because the volume has been insane in terms of how much we've taken on this game. Maryland's another one. They're, they're mm-hmm. I think, like this is like probably the third week out of four yeah. that Maryland's you know popped up as a sharp side. Uh, they're at Indiana catching four right now. I had sharp money on Maryland plus five and plus four and a half. I've got a, a ton of action on this game as well. Um, you know, nothing sharp on Indiana at all, but I definitely have sharp money on Maryland. If you remember last week, we had Maryland as a sharp play, too. They were at Syracuse. They were catching nothing. It was like two and a half. The sharps came in, line closed like one and a half, and I believe Maryland won that game all right. So, uh, and then, you know, a couple of weeks ago, same thing with Maryland. Yeah. The sharps were on them. So it's interesting that, you know, I think it's like three or four weeks that Maryland's been aside. The sharps are, are on. Uh, UMass is a sharp side this week. Now, mm-hmm. they opened up uh, catching seven points. That's where the sharp money came. They're at home to Bowling Green. Their line's down to four and a half right now. Um, I got decent, this is, you know, another one of those games you wouldn't expect to have decent action on, but I got a pretty good good volume both ways. Um, definite sharp point on UMass, though, plus seven. Like I said, the line's four and a half now. Uh, Drop down to California. That was what I would call a, a very sharp game. Mm. Sharps came in on California, minus 10 and a half and minus 12. We're up to 14 right now. I'm trying to get a trickle back on Colorado, but uh, definitely you know, I got public money on California. I got sharps on California, so this one could be a little bit ugly. We're up to 14 right now. Um, we touched on the, the Notre Dame total as well, which is quite sharp. Uh, Arkansas, Texas A&M, I have sharp money there on the over. Uh, the sharps came in at over 70. Right now we're sitting at 71.5, wow. down to another total for you on Tennessee and Georgia. 57.5 is where the total is right now. Sharps came in over 55.5. I've got absolutely, like, like, literally I have zero bets on the under <laughs> in this game. So this is look like a, it could run away on us in terms of the sharps and the public being, being on the same side there. Uh, another side for you is uh, Idaho. They're at home mm, to South yes. Alabama. Uh, one of the teams you probably won't want to watch this game, but you might want to collect some money on it. South Alabama is now a four-point favorite. I had sharp money, on, uh, sharp money on Idaho when they were catching plus seven. Let me ask you about that because, you know, I, you know, I review these, these lines when they come out, uh, you know, every Sunday, and I saw that one, and I was like, why the hell is Idaho a seven-point under, home underdog to South Alabama? I was like, that line is ridiculous. I didn't bet it because I assumed it was something that I wasn't seeing. My boss comes in on Monday. He says the same thing. He's like, what's up with that line? That line doesn't make any sense. I said, yeah, I know it doesn't make any sense. It turns out it, it didn't make any sense. It was a, it was a sharp line. So so uh, maybe the lesson is we don't question ourselves. I mean, uh, you know, uh, why was that? Why was South Alabama a seven-point favorite there? That's, that's that's a good question. Obviously, I'm, you know, you throw a number out there, right? And the the sharp guys come in, they they whack your number around, and when when you throw up a number that's that's not right, they you know they jump on and they let you know very quickly. And like you see, you know, being, uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out your profile here, Peter. You got you're on the, the the square stuff, you're on the sharp stuff, you're all over the map. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you pull the trigger on, on on Idaho plus seven, I would consider you sharp money. Now, if you keep playing every game over. Maybe Maybe not, but yeah, it's a game that you know. Sometimes you just gotta struggle to find the number. And we earlier in the season, usually you see some more moves, but we should have figured stuff out by now. But uh, we'll see how this one goes. But definitely a sharp money on Idaho when it was plus seven. We're down to four right now. All right, so, so let me ask you about that, Brent, because uh, you know a lot of people are gonna take a little detour here, but a lot of people I'm sure are wondering about this. You know, sometimes we see these opening lines and we're like, it doesn't make sense to me. Am I just not seeing something, or or is there something off that that the market is off on? So how do you actually open your lines at, at at DSI. Well, it's a combination of things. I mean, we have actually sources who come to us with numbers and they come up with like, this is what the opening number should be. Mm-hmm. We kind of take a look at our customer base and think about, you know, where our numbers should be in terms of, uh, of what we're looking at in terms of balancing action. You have to remember a lot of people kind of lose the idea that look at, you know, the opening number or whatever the number is, that's kind of designed to predict who's going to win the game. Right. Where in reality, we're more looking in terms of what's the number that we're going to get action on both sides for. Now, it never works out that way, but right. that's kind of like the how we go in terms of, you know, the tension when we come up with numbers what's going to get action both ways and then of course you're sharp you know, once you open up the numbers, your sharp guys hit you right away. You, you know, you take a bet, you move maybe a full point. You know, a, to- a total, you're probably moving a point and a half. So you may, might move a full point, and you just kind of bing, bang, back and forth until it, until it settles down, and you've got either sharps on both, you know, both way, or, or they're just not touching a game, and you figure your m- number might be right. 
All right, so with the South Alabama-Idaho opener, uh, what happened was, uh, you know, you had two or three sources. They came to you. They said, we think this line should be, you know, six or seven or eight. And you were like, okay, seems okay to me. And you opened it at seven. That's what happened? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to – this might not be the case in this one game. They might have come to us and say, look, you know, one guy might have said, said six. The other guy might have said six and a half. Um, you know, a decision might have made, been made to say, you know, I think the public's going to back South Alabama. Let's open up at seven and see what happens. And you do something like that, and you find out right away how accurate you are. But there's never, like, a discrepancy of more than, like, a point or a point and a half uh, in, in what they recommend on their opening lines? They're usually pretty close. I mean, in, in college football, again, the higher the number, the greater the you know potential for discrepancy. You right. know, if you're opening up a number like Wisconsin minus 34, you might have got someone who who said 37, or another guy who said 33. But it wasn't like someone said, uh, you know, Idaho, South Alabama should be pick them, and another guy said it should be minus seven, and you were like, what do we do? Yeah, no, not a, this right. wasn't a case like that, no. And that, yeah, that almost never happens. All right. Well, thanks for that uh, info, Brent. Uh, what else do you have for us from uh, the rest of college football week five? I've got a public sharp split here uh, game with Memphis at Mississippi. I've got sharp money actually on the favorite Mississippi at home. Sharp money came on them minus 19 and a half. We're sitting at uh, minus 21 right now. My count in terms of the wagers we've actually taken is about two to one in favor of Memphis, mostly public money there. And my dollar volume is actually slightly favors Mississippi because it was the big betters who were the sharp laying the 19 and a half and 20 with Mississippi. Lines 21 and a half right now. Uh, down to Washington State. I got sharp money there on the under 67. We're sitting at 66 right now. I've gotten a little bit back on the over, but uh, you know, the sharp money was definitely on the under 67. Washington State, they're at Utah. And that's about it for the week, Pete. All right, Brent. Well, another awesome call. Thanks so much for all your uh, insights and the time you put into this show. And we'll talk to you uh, tomorrow for uh, NFL Week 4. Thanks, Brent. The SBR Network offers free sports picks and game breakdowns. Big money free betting contests year round, a real time Vegas style odds monitoring service, and much more. So come see for yourself. To stay updated on SBR news and promotions, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Google. And do be sure to subscribe to the Sportsbook Review YouTube channel to catch all our daily sports shows.